Well, this is the old controversy. Dogs are carnivores and they have to have meats and so therefore they can't thrive on plants. That's absolutely not true. Dogs evolved when they were domesticated from the wolf. As dogs became dogs, uh, when people that cared for them became hunter-gatherers to being agricultural based, the genomic background of the wolf adapted to the modern dog. There's now 100,000 chemicals in uh, legal use in this country. And uh, the tests that have been done uh, of human beings and animals show that there are hundreds of chemicals that have accumulated in our bodies. Dogs and cats have about one and a half times the level humans do. And again, this is because of the way they're eating so much animal product. Generally, dogs eating a plant-based diet have more of a chance to live a longer life, partly because they might be eating slightly fewer calories, and that leads, that is the one thing that we know leads to longer lives in all animals and also because they're avoiding so many toxins, carcinogens, antibiotics, synthetic hormones that can lead to diseases, so they tend to stay healthier longer. Conventional meat-based diets are typically comprised of ingredients of uh, pretty poor um, quality in some cases, and also um, animal, animal parts that are often considered to be unfit for human consumption. So in uh, an attempt to extract as much money as possible from the animal slaughtering process, the slaughtering industry um, tries to make use of those products, the inedible parts, the parts which are uh, diseased, fatty, cancerous, uh, considered unfit for human consumption because they are awful, because they are uh, things like uh, ligaments, tendons, sinews and other parts of the animal which are not um, considered fit for human consumption, often they'll be diverted into the animal food chain so that the companies can get a little bit more money from doing this. So when they see the animal and they open it up and they see it's all filled with cancer, they take that animal, they process that animal, and they take all the meat away from it and put that into the, into the animal vats. Anything that is um, uh, that they don't see the cancer and they don't have any visual piece of it because they're not doing histopathology, that is put into the human food chain. But the animal that is condemned with the cancer, it's sprayed with a chemical that will disinfect it, which is not going to get rid of cancer, which is adding more chemicals to the food. And then the cancer and the animal are ground up and put into the rendering plants. So you wonder why more animals are getting cancer, because they're being fed animals that have cancer. And so therefore, there's a real problem here that if we're feeding the food chain that has got cancer in it, what do we expect we're going to get out of it? Dogs aren't carnivores. They're omnivores. I mean, I don't know how much science and how much debate we have to have around this, but it's very clear based on everything about dogs that they are omnivorous, just like us. That's one of the reasons why they make a great best friend for humans. I think people who allege that feeding a vegan diet to a dog is cruel are misinformed, and they're not using the term in an accurate way. If they wanted to be concerned about cruelty, they should visit a factory farm or a slaughterhouse and see what farmed animals are subjected to, forced confinement, mutilations without anesthetic, including debeaking of hens without painkillers, dehorning of cows, uh, tail docking of pigs, uh, ear notching, castration even without any painkillers at all. That's cruel. Feeding a nutritious diet is not cruel. You know, products that don't make it for human food, and, and the, this could include animals that have cancers, uh, other diseases. It could include um, wounds and pus-filled injuries um, are cut out of the carcasses so they're not fed to humans, but then they can go in, into pet food. There's nothing natural about our lives. So to selectively say, okay, 99.99999% of our lives have nothing to do with nature, but to use nature as a justification for something, for torture and for murder, and for, you know, wholesale suffering, it, it's mind-boggling just how asinine that is. Any vet will tell you that a dog who is fed on a, a meat-rich diet often comes in, in in age with cancers, 
precancerous tumors, with congestive heart failure, with diabetes. We see dogs now with diabetes. That's not natural for a dog. And I think part of that, a big part of that, is what is being put into the cans and the bags of commercially based meat and dairy based dog food. We, we would not expect a, an omnivore like a dog that has all the um, digestive enzymes to break down plants, plant material, grains, legumes, and utilize these to have any problems with eating a plant-based diet. Again, if it's well balanced and high in fiber, in fact, it should improve digestibility. And again, a lot of the ailments that we typically see in dogs might, um, might possibly go away. My experiences feeding a plant-based diet to my dog have been nothing but positive. I honestly think he wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the fact that he was eating a vegan dog food. Um, his, his digestive function was just terrible uh, when he was eating meat-based and, and his inflammatory bowel disease just couldn't be controlled, even with medications. And as soon as I figured out that he needed to be eating a plant-based dog food, he pretty quickly you know, turned around and he's, he's been eat, eating uh, plant-based now for eight and a half years and he's just a healthy, happy guy. It's interesting that some studies that have been done have shown that um, the level of toxins is in between different kinds of diets is really significant. We think that's a mm -hmm. lot to do with why there's more, there are mm -hmm. higher cancer rates now in pets. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, you know, some studies have shown that vegans have 2% of the level of tested toxins compared to omnivores. That's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. you know, pesticides and all that, that's because tex toxins accumulate in animal fat. The raw meat and bone diet has become really popular and, and People feed that, I think, very often with the very best in intentions, with, um, with the idea that it's duplicating the, the natural diet of their dogs. But in fact, it really isn't the same as what a wild wolf would eat. Um, number one, our dogs are not wolves. You know, they've changed a lot over the years. Um, but as far as the diet itself goes, the meat and bones that our dogs today eat are very, very different from the animals that wild wolves eat eat eight thousands of years ago or, or that they eat now. You know, there's a lot of chronic disease and there's a lot of reasons for it. It's, you know, our environment, it's our, uh, you know, our use of vaccinations and how we vaccinate our, our animals, whether they're large or small animals, it's, you know, how they're fed. And it's all been the basis of that holistic thought. But then I had to really start to think about that it was really the meat that was part of the problem or a lot of the problem. There are some really helpful sugars out there in the form of carbohydrates, whole grains, for example, beans, legumes, split peas, all the fruits. We know that these plant foods can impact cancer risk. Uh, the American Institute for Cancer Research labels them as cancer-fighting foods. So there's an abundance of research to show that healthful carbohydrates, natural sugars, are actually helping to put cancer beyond arm's reach. Why would someone want their companion animal to, to be vegan? How many animals are killed each year just for dogs? Millions? I think it's more like billions. That's a tremendous loss of life. Just like people, dogs do great on a plant food diet.